is the Fade 5 Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, you jack wagons, and happy Stinko de Mayo to you and yours. Uh, let the uh, margarita start flowing. Uh, Tis indeed the Fade 5 Podcast uh, presented by Suavecito Tequila. Go out and buy some Suavecito tonight at Total Wine and more. Reposado. Mix it with uh, your favorite uh, orange liqueur. Maybe a little Cointreau. Maybe a little Grand Marnier. Go with a lime. Go with a squeeze of agave syrup. Chicken up over ice serve it with the salted rim and you have a wonderful delicious team Hivos margarita where I'm right where are you uh that is nate lundy uh I am where are the, you i am in the darkened interrogation room here at the united center in chicago illinois i, you I have done the up. if you're watching the video right now on the old uh uh tube you um brad is like, first of all, it's very dark where yeah. you are because uh, normally the shine off of your bald head uh, exists right now. Very, very dimly lit, uh, very dark. And then if you're only listening to the audio portion of this, Brad's in like an echo chamber. It's like you're in a porta potty yeah. or something. This is great. This is a great yeah. way to start on the Friday edition of the pod, Brad. Good job. Good job. Well, I shouldn't have thrown that foreign object uh, onto the floor uh, inside the United Center, but the Chicago Bulls it? deserved it. They were you terrible. Lobbing, you lobbing dildos into the into the painted area? Uh, vibrators, actually. Oh. Uh, and on that note, let's get after it and hop aboard the Plus Buzz. Honk, honk. All right, Lundy, your favorite longer odds wager plus 100 or greater, uh, whether it's on the ice, whether it's on the hardwood or on the diamond or maybe somewhere else. What do you got for me on this fine Friday slash Cinco de Mayo? Um, I've got one for you. Just single player prop to go. We got one game in the Stanley Cup playoff uh, tonight. We've got New Jersey and Carolina uh, as the Canes are at home. Uh, let's go back to one of my favorites. Uh, if you watch the TV show on Altitude, if you've listened to this pod throughout the year, you know how much I enjoy Sebastian Ajo of oh, the yeah. Carolina Hurricanes. Um, you're talking about the guy that leads them in the postseason in goals with four. However, he did not score. In the last game, he did tally an assist, but he did not score in the last game. And that actually broke the streak. He had scored in three straight playoff games uh, to close out the series that they had against the Islanders. So I say Ajo finds the back of the net tonight, and you can snag that at DraftKings as of tape time at plus 155. Ooh. So not bad um, for him to have an anytime point, by the way. So not a goal, but just a point. Um, sits at about a minus 175. So I don't want to bet that by itself, but I will tell you, um, I think it's an excellent uh, leg that you could add to a parlay. Like if you wanted to multi-sport, like let's say there's something you like in the uh, Celtic 76ers game tonight, throw Ajo on there for just a point at minus 175. Make him a leg of your parlay because I think it's pretty likely to happen um, like I said, he didn't score in the last game, but he did get an assist. And in the seven postseason games that Carolina has played so far, he's got points in six out of the seven. So mm -hmm. he's just he's always around the puck. He is very important to them from an offensive standpoint. Uh, so if you don't like the anytime goal, make him a part of a parlay. But I'm all about Sebastian Ajo tonight between the Canes and the Devils. Uh, I'm going to go with the New York Metropolitan against uh, your Colorado Pebbles here, Lundy. Give me Starling Marte to score one run. That is all I need. A guy that usually bats out of the two-hole in that Mets lineup. Uh, lower juice there, but still at plus odds. Plus 105 available at BetMGM. Antonio Zinzatella is expected to tow the rubber the first time this season for the Rockies in this game. He's got a career 4.88 ERA at the major league level uh, a guy it's a soft tosser and i think Marte is going to tee off on it because that's what he usually does in his career oh he's just seven for 11 against Cincinnati. that's it so get on base and i know it's been a rarity for him to score a run much like the mets this entire season last couple of weeks are number 25 in total run scored and since has only scored uh three times in his last 12 games but given that rich history against the starting hurler for Colorado, hopefully he gets on base and maybe say Pete Alonso smashes a long ball over the fence 
and Marte then touches home plate. So that is my plus bus offering. Uh, you on call this them, hey, evening. you you call them the Pebbles. They've won four in a row. Okay, and I don't know where the bleep they found it, but they've won four in a row. I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. Be careful uh, knocking knocking Charlie Blackman and company over here. Well, they're going to come crashing back down to earth here in short order. Maybe it starts tonight with that on the board. Let's get after it, me amigos, with another edition of the Fade Five. Number five. All right, New Marl Cinco here uh, on this uh, podcast. Uh, we're going to go with Max Muncy. And uh, I just need one total base. Uh, so it could be on a, a single, could be a double, triple, home run, really doesn't matter. I cannot believe the line is this low. I thought for sure it was going to be one and a half total bags for him against San Diego and you Darvish, but that is not indeed the case. So take advantage of this lowered line now before it adjusts. And I'm willing to pay uh, not really heavy ju- uh, juice here at minus 125. At BetMGM, you look at uh, the L.A. version of Mad Max, a guy in his career against Darvish, 7 for 28 lifetime. Now, it's not extraordinary results, but he does have some success against the starter for San Diego. He's got a 3.60 ERA, a 33.3% hard hit rate, and has allowed 24 hits in 30 innings pitch this year. Uh, Muncie is one of the hottest bats Right now in Major League Baseball, Lundy, he's uh, logged at least one total base in six of his last eight games. So put all together on this ultra suppressed line. It shouldn't be this low. I think Mac, Max Muncy finds some green space or he eclipses a fence uh, in this contest there in SoCal. So fade or follow uh, Max Muncy over a half a total bag in San Diego, minus 125. At Bet MGM. Take it to the bank. I like this one. Minus 125 to just get yeah. on base safely, other than a walk. I mean, come on. This is this is a gift, Brad. This this is a Cinco de Mayo. This is uh somebody at the bar bought a round for everybody. And you're like, all right, I'll take a free drink. I kind of feel like that's what this one is. Nice little gift. Good find. Yeah, buy yourself a round of those shots of Suavecito, baby, because I think this bad boy's hitting. Number four. All right, new more Quattro here on the Fate 5 podcast today. Let's do a little two-leg parlay in Major League Baseball. Uh, we're going to get some action in that aforementioned Dodgers and Padres matchup. And give me Freddie Freeman to get uh, a hit. I just need one. Uh, he has done this repeatedly. As a matter of fact, uh, against you, Darvish, and repeatedly at the dish, he's done in seven of his last nine games. He's eight for 25 lifetime against Darvish. Uh, that checks out to a 320 batting average. And what's really interesting, if you wanted to get a little extra spicy, you could just take Freddie Freeman on a single. Uh, he uh, has done that seven times. Uh, on those eight hits against Darvish in his career. Again, I mentioned uh, Darvish, 24 hits allowed in third innings pitch, but Freeman doesn't matter what variety of hit uh, for the sake of this parlay. I just need one. Smash into some green space, find a gap, split it, hit a wall, whatever you got to do. So give me that hit, Freddie Freeman. And I'm going to match it together uh, with Carlos Santana uh, to also get a hit, just one, against Toronto and Chris uh, the Basset Hound. Again, who's been belly dragging to say the least in the box score this season. Bassett, a 5.18 ERA and a 1.64 home run per nine. Mark allowed a Santana three for nine in his career uh, against the hurler from the Toronto Blue Jays with a pair of home runs and a 1,566 OPS. And most importantly, Santana has registered a hit in eight of his last nine games. So again, Carlos Santana get a hit, Freddie Freeman to get a hit. Both those events occur, plus 121. Work those shoulders and get seduced by the juice in the process at DraftKings. Lundy, better follow. Bankroll building. I was having a conversation on the radio with a a couple of hosts yesterday about the whole idea of uh, stop trying to swing for the fences every time. You can win games by having consistent singles. That's what this is. I've got another one for you coming up in bonus time. All it is is you put together 
stupid. You can do with same game parlays. You can do it with hits. You can do it with strikeouts. You can do it with all kinds of stuff. But you're trying to put together something. Get yourself to plus 110, plus 120, 25, 30, right in that range. And then stop. Force yourself to stop. Just like I have to do every day at around 11 a.m. I have to force myself to stop drinking coffee. Because otherwise, shit gets weird. Okay? Same idea. You got to, you got to. There's got to be a line. You got to cut it off at some point. Brad's doing it perfectly for you here. Uh, I like it for Freeman. Really like it for Santana. He was a guy that I had my eye on as a potential to put into a parlay today as well. So I'm glad to see him make an appearance on the fade five. Uh, definitely call stop when he get to two legs on this prop. Uh, but when it comes to tequila on Cinco de Mayo, don't you dare stop. Number three. All right, numero trace here on the Fate Five Podcast. Uh, have a heart, uh, would you? Give me Josh Hart, who's going to go pitter pat in game numero trace in the series between uh, the Knicks and uh, the Miami Heat. I'm taking the over on 11 and a half rebounds plus assists, uh, just a little bit higher here. A stronger big at minus 130 available at DraftKings, but I'm willing to pay it. Uh, he went uh, 12 in game one, so he hit the over barely. Uh, Captain Oak, yeah, shiver me timbers, did not come into play there. Uh, but in game number two, he went nuts. He went bananas. 20 combined in assists and rebounds. Uh, he has done this in three of six contests uh, this season against the Miami Heat. That's included the regular season. And look at what Miami is allowed here in the NBA postseason. Six most rebounds per game of the opposition and the fourth most assists per game as well. Hart does the little things. He is a dirty worker, whether snagging boards underneath, get those second chance opportunities, or dishing dimes. I'm feeling ultra confident on this over, Lundy, though the NBA... Uh, it's made me um, poor and destitute here uh, the last about 24, 48 hours. But hopefully Hart's going to hit me with a winner on the over 11 and a half rebounds plus assists. Minus 130 of DraftKings. Fade or follow. Okay. Now here's, folks, here's where I'm going with this one. Um, Brad has really been bad. <laughs> I've been NBA. bad. He I'm has really been bad. really bad at the NBA lately. Thank you but, for getting a devastating case of shits, Kevin Looney. Yeah, uh, exactly. But here's what I want to. Here's what I'm going to throw out there, though. Is last week, I uh, uh, after because I continue to kill it in hockey, except for last week. Last week it was like pow, like I was on the ropes. Tyson's just body shotting upside the everything. Yeah. I was getting killed. And then eventually you just go, oh, okay, boom. And you start, you know, then you're then you're back to your putting your dancing shoes on because stuff starts to bounce back. So I am going to follow you on this one because you are due, you son of a bitch. You've got to get back on that NBA horse at some point. Uh, otherwise, you're going to keep taking some body blows up against the ropes in the corner. So we got to get you back on the horse. I like this one. Take, uh, God, I'm nervous, though, because you have been you've been pretty cold, my man. You've been cold. I'm so frigid in the NBA. Please, Josh Hart, warm me up. Number two. All right, numero dos. Uh, we're going to go back to the association, and uh, maybe this will also break the cold spell. So uh, give me a jacket, would you please? Uh, Devin Booker on the under four and a half rebounds. Uh, plus money, plus 110 there at BetMGM. A uh, well set line, uh, to be honest with you. He has been over this number in four of his last five games. And so far in this series against the Denver Nuggets, uh, right there in your neck of the woods, Lundy, uh, he went four rebounds, uh, and then in game two, five rebounds. So that's why this is splitting the difference here at four and a half. But I think there's some value on this line. He looked at what he did in the regular season against Denver. Uh, he went one rebound, two rebounds, and zero rebounds. I only played four minutes in one of those games. Uh, but you look at Denver, third fewest rebounds per game because they have a guy, you might have heard of him, named Nikola Jokic, who always uh, is on the glass as a knack of refining uh, the round ball when it uh, careens and caroms off the board or off the rim. And I think it's going to play a pivotal factor in this one. So as a result, Devin Booker under four and a half rebounds, plus 110 at BetMGM. Good, sir. Fade or follow. 
Uh, I'm going to fade you on this one because I think he gets to five. Um, the oh, fourth, the, the, you talked about the game that he really didn't play in. That was the Christmas Day game. He was coming back, I think, from the groin injury, and he basically re-aggravated it in the first four yep. minutes, and they had to take yep. him out, um, which is why that, like you got to you got to look at the other two games, throw the Christmas game uh, out. But I think he winds up with five tonight. I mean, look, this is uh, uh, this is you know this is the all important game three, right? Like I think you and I are contractually required to refer to it as a pivotal game three. Uh, <laughs> by the way, the only freaking time I ever hear that word used uh, is in the postseason of either the NBA or the NHL when we start talking about pivotal game three. Uh, it's always pivotal. Um, I, I don't think that word actually exists in any other uh, usage in the English language other than postseason play um, in American sports. Um, so I'm actually going to fade you on this one. I think he gets right at five. Um, I, I don't think I think this is one. Would it surprise me if he finished right at four and you wind up cashing this ticket? Not at all. But I see some sort of slop rebound coming in in the final six minutes of the game that's going to screw you on this one. Well, it's pivotal to my bankroll, especially in NBA props, that Booker actually hits an under. Number one. I knew Moro Uno on the feed of five today. Mastakila. I'm going to do an SGP uh, in the Cinco de Mayo matchup between Boston and Philadelphia. And it's on the ancient one, Al Horford. Uh, the line on points alone is seven and a half. And I think he's going to hit the over on that. So give me on this SGP, Horford eight points. And then uh, we're going to add a little pinch of spice. Horford, one or more block shots. So uh, reduce the juice, and then we get seduced by that juice at plus 115 at DraftKings. Uh, look what Horford has done uh, in the entire season, really in, in this postseason. Uh, he's been amazing, specifically this series. Uh, he's really come alive. Uh, 11 points and three blocks in game number one but only five points and two blocks in the follow-up. So he's been over once and under one so far in the series. Now, in the regular season, he crushed it in points at a couple of games, 11 points and 15 points. Uh, and in the other match, we only had six points against the Sixers, but no block shots in any of those matchups. So he's only been over this threshold in both these categories once in Five games against Philadelphia. And you look at Philadelphia here in the NBA postseason. Third fewest points per game allowed at 101 even. And the eighth fewest po uh, blocks per game allowed at four and a half. But uh, again, I, I think Al Horford's going to splash into the fountain of youth. I'm not so worried about the points. But can he match it with a block shot? Again, he's got five over the first two games in this series. Please swat one of the suites, uh, seats uh, or into the suite, which would be an amazing shot block. Uh, good, sir. And get to at least eight points. Both those events occur uh, for You Can Call Me Out. Plus 115 at DraftKings. Lundy, if you follow. Ooh, see, you got me right. We were cruising along just fine on today's pod. And then you brought up these last two. And all of a sudden, I, I'm worried about the point side of it, Brad. I'll be mm. honest with you. So while you were talking, this doesn't get us to plus odds. You'd have to find something else if you wanted to. But I was like, I don't know about eight points. I just, I, I, I you're taking it down to five, aren't you? Well, but here's the thing. If I take him to five or more points, if I take him to five or more rebounds and I take him for one blocked shot, that gets me to minus 110. So the problem is it doesn't get me to the plus odds that we were talking about. I almost need one more leg to toss in there, even if that leg is like a minus 350 by itself, because it'll pop me up over that number. So, folks, this is a choose your own adventure if you want to roll with Brad. If you think Horford's going to be able to do that with the points and you've got yourself at plus 115 at DraftKings. I took his points to five, took his rebounds at five and took one blocked shot. Those three legs are a minus 110. So you could either play it at the standard juice of minus 110, or you could choose your own adventure, add one more leg of some kind into the mix there, and you'd get yourself into plus odds. So that was me doing that completely on the fly while you were talking. Uh, speaking of choose your own adventure, it's bonus time, Lundy, before the tequila inevitably gets me slobber knocker tonight. Please serve me up, bartender, uh, with some additional action, whether on the ice, the hardcourt, or the diamond. What you got for me on this Freaky Friday? 
Uh, let's stay in that game for a moment. You were talking about uh, Devin Booker with his uh, with his um, uh, rebounds. rebounds. And yeah. you played him on the over for the rebounds. I no, like. The, I took him on the under the rebounds. Him on the under, excuse me. That's right. I took the over on that one. Um, I like him on the over at 38 and a half on his points plus assists, which is juiced up slightly right now at DraftKings. It's a, sitting at a minus 120. It's been juiced slightly. But if you look at the seven postseason games that he has played, he's been over in four of those. As we all know, there is no Chris Paul tonight, which means I think Booker's going to have to get a couple of extra dishes there. He's going to have to go for a couple extra dimes because Chris Paul isn't going to be there to do it. And so I think that gets him up over that particular number, 38 and a half on his points plus assists. Again, it's juiced just slightly, but that's the stat line I want to go to. You can also start to look at some of the uh, role players that are probably going to see some increased minutes, things like that within this game. Those may show up with Brad and his bonus time. If not, just check out some of those because, again, without Chris Paul, some of those minutes are going to have to get distributed, and some of those guys that are role players have really low thresholds to be able to hit. Like um, uh, Okogi, is that how you say his last name? Okogi? Is that how you say uh, it? Josh? Sure. I, I never remember how the hell to say his last name. I apologize <laughs> to uh, Josh and his entire family. His points plus rebounds is at like nine and a half. That's an example of a guy that I think is going to step up because of the way that the uh, that the game is likely to be able to go. All right. Um, Rowdy Telez. Oh, he's been in fuego. Absolutely on fire. He's on a seven game hit streak right now and lifetime. He is two for three against Sean Manaya. So it's not a very big sample size, but he is two for three for him lifetime. Take Telez for a hit and then give me Paul Goldschmidt for a mm. hit as well at plus 127. He's only got three at bats against Matthew Boyd of the Detroit Tigers, but he went one for two with a walk um, uh, in that one. Uh, He's Boyd has given up 18 hits in his last three starts. So all I need is Paul Goldschmidt to have one of those. So if you take Telez and you take Goldschmidt, you put those two together, it is a plus 127. Ooh. But, oh, Brad, I want to throw this out there for people that are already feeling the Cinco de Mayo. All right. You, we've already, we've moved on from the Justin Timberlake jokes. Now it's time for some tequila on Cinco de Mayo. If you take Brad's two leg of Carlos Santana and Freddie Freeman, you combine it with my two leg of oh. Rowdy Telez and Paul Goldschmidt at DraftKings. That is a plus four oh four. So if you want to play them individually, go right ahead. Remember, Brad, yours was like what plus one twenty one something like that. Yeah, one. Yeah, and mine is a plus one twenty seven. Feel free to play them individually, yeah. but if you want to put all four of them together and slap like a half unit bet on it, it comes out to be a plus. 404. If you're listening to the podcast early enough, give me Garrett Hampson for a hit. That's all I need is for Hampson to have a hit. It's minus 115 at DraftKings against Justin Steele. Again, small sample size, but he is three for three with a walk, and two of those three hits were doubles against him lifetime. So he's not only hitting it uh, against Justin Steele in previous matchups, he's making it to second. So he's getting the job done. Uh, and then lastly, Nobody scores more runs in the first five innings of a game than the Tampa Bay Rays do. So give me the over on two and a half for the team total oh. on the Rays um, taken on the Yankees at home. You're going to play that one at a minus 110 at DraftKings. Again, this is their team total for the first five. And like I said, nobody scores more runs in the first five innings than Tampa. They're averaging 3.97 per game so far this season. But most importantly, they average 4.26 when they're at home. So just throwing that out there, it's kind of an oddball bet for you to jump on the first five on a team total. But the way Tampa's been hitting pitchers early, I think they can get to the Yanks. So give me the over on that one. As always, yield the floor to the fine gentleman from Illinois. Yeah, excellent selections there. I'm going to tell you on a couple of those. Let's get to the Team Hamas Parlay Play of the Day. And on this Uno, Dos, Tres, Cuatro, uh, me amigos, yeah, four-legger, uh, put this together, DraftKings. And if you include the boost, uh, there's a little button you can click uh, to enhance the odds at the top of the screen. It's plus 212 on the Jews there. It is the Mets on the money line. It's the Mets to score three or more runs. It's Pete Alonso to get a hit. And it's Kodai Singa to strike out. At least five Colorado Rockies, and again, to get that plus two twelve, 
Uh, Pete Alonso, four for nine lifetime against Antonio Zenzatella. Uh, the Mets, yeah, they're number 25 in the last couple of weeks in total run score, but they've scored at least three runs in three of their last five games. As I said earlier, Zenzatella, 4.88 career ERA at the major league level. And sure, the Mets have lost eight of their last 10. Uh, but the Rockies have actually lost seven of their last 10 away from Coors Field. And this game being played in the NYC. So I think all four of those legs hit uh, without uh, any difficulty whatsoever. By the way, Sinka has struck out at least five in all five turns of rotation so far this season. He's got that Sterling 11 plus K per nine on the year. Elsewhere, let's go with another SGP, shall we? Uh, in the Cincinnati and Chicago White Sox game, Give me the Reds, three-plus runs. Give me Hunter Green and that 100-mile-an-hour straight-up gas that he tosses to get at least six strikeouts. And give me the White Sox and Reds on an all-total under 12-and-a-half. Uh, put those together, all three legs. It's plus 130. Cincinnati has scored at least three runs in seven of their last nine games. Sneaky good offense right now, really clicking. The White Sox had the 10th highest K rate of any team in the MLB over the last couple of weeks. And you know, Green, all he does is make guys miss. He's got a 29.4 call plus swing, his strike rate, uh, and has hit the over on this strikeout prop, uh, six Ks in three of six turns in the rotation. Uh, Lance Land, a little bit adventurous, uh, to say the least, the White Sox. I do worry about the total, uh, but I took it way up to 12 and a half. So hopefully Hunter Green, the good green, shows up and shuts down the White Sox. So, you know, maybe they the Reds can pile up the, the runs and I don't have to worry about uh, the White Sox really threatening uh, the over there. Uh, elsewhere in Major League Baseball, uh, one more SGP for you. And I'm going to give you a, a nerfy as well. Uh, Oakland, Kansas City. The only reason you can watch this game is to bet on it. It's got awful. Uh, both teams are the dregs of the keg. No question about it. I'm going to go an all total on six and a half and take the over. Both teams also score two or more runs. And Vinny Pasquantino to get a hit. He mashes lefties. Uh, hitting like uh, well north of 300 on the season against left-handed pitching. Kyle Fuller is on the bump for Oakland. He's got a 7-plus ERA. Do you need any additional evidence? I don't think you do. Uh, Brad Keller toe the rubber for Kansas City. There's going to be a lot of runs on the board. Oakland's been an overs machine so far this year. 21-10 and 10 overs to unders. And Kansas City above 500 overs to under. Uh, as well on this season. Okay, elsewhere in Major League Baseball, a nerfy. Uh, it's an early game, 120 Central start. Uh, Miami and Chicago on the north side. Uh, both these teams are top five in nerfies this season. In fact, Miami is number one in Major League Baseball in nerfy hit rate, uh, cashing in 68% of the time. 21 nerfies to just 10 nerfies. Uh, the Cubs are number five in nerfy hit rate at 57%. Uh, you got Edwin Cabrera going up against Justin Steele. They face one another down in Miami uh, a little over a week ago. And guess what? That was a nerfy in that game. Uh, Justin Steele has not allowed a run in six starts in the first inning so far this season. Uh, Cabrera uh, has hit the Nerfy in five of six of his starts. So uh, knowing the struggles the Cubs offensively right now, I do believe the Nerfy does indeed hit. And it's just minus 105 at DraftKings Sportsbook. And then one last NBA play on Saturday. Uh, in the Knicks and a Heat matchup. But we'll see if Jimmy Butler is going to be in uniform uh, for Miami. But I like Gabe Vincent. And I'm going to take the over on points plus assists. And that number is sitting at just 17 and a half. It's a minus 125 juice at DraftKings. But this guy is going nuts right now. Going off in the NBA postseason. 25 and 26 combined in these two categories. Games one. In games two, uh, he's got a ton of minutes played. 41 minutes played in game one, 33 in game two. Even if Butler is back, I think he'll get enough tick. He's got that hot hand, and you're building a nice little cushion there to avoid the pushing. Uh, when you work in the assists with the points, he could do this and points alone. All right, we are out of time here. On the Fade 5 Podcast, do me a favor, drop us a rating and or review at your convenience. Also, fade or follow us on the Twitter. You can follow Lundy at Lundy or check me out at 
noisy huevos. Enjoy your Cinco de Mayo and let the tequila flow. Until next time, as always, feed or follow. That is up to you.